Welcome back, everybody. We're following on from the last video, which will be in the description on the COSXL converter. So today we're going to be taking a quick look at this. First of all, I've disabled the middles, so I don't need to uh, get previews, just get the end here. And what I'm going to do, somebody asked, can we do COSXL edit? And the answer is yes. All you've got to do is change the uh, load checkpoint from COSXL to COSXL edit. All right. Now it will give a couple of weird errors about dimension mismatching, but it does work. So I'm cool with it. <laughs> so basically, uh, what it's going to do is just the same as last time. Uh, you can run the previews if you want to check first that it's not just going to be garbage. I know that this one works. So I'm just going to run a prompt and it's going to give us uh, a real viz Excel. Take away the 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 base from the COSXL edit and then merge it back with you know merge it back together again. So it seems pretty clean. So I just have a look in here, and here's the error I was talking about. So it says shape mismatch to fusion model input block zero weight not merge three twenty four three three torch size. I think that means not equal to three twenty eight three three. So four three three eight three three. So there's something wrong there. But it just says merged with diffusion block channel changed from torch size eight three three to eight three three. So I think that it's somehow managed to do it. I I've never seen this error before. But essentially, if you had saved that, you would now have a model which you can sort of rename. So if I go into mine. From last time, I had Cosreal Viz Excel, and then this time I've created Cosreal Viz Excel Edit. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this workflow and move over to this, which is just a simple. Uh, I think I've actually got this in the pack. It's a test, so it'll do HD inference. But to be honest, there's no tricks here. It's just standard loading of Allura. I've got not the True World SDXL. Uh, on there, it's just standard standard checkpoint straight in like you would any any normal workflow. Um, there is this optional scale to total pixels for the input image, but it's optional. I turn mine off. I know that this is one thousand twenty four by one thousand twenty four, um, and I got some really nice images by simply saying watercolor. So the prompt, watercolor painting, yeah. So real viz XL, right? There's a cos. This, this is a cos XL output from a prompt um, using not the true world. And then here we have the watercolor, and then there we have the upscale. Right? That's it. So uh, let's just do some other. Let's say octane render. I wonder if it can do that. Octane render. Yeah, look at that. It's made it look like a 3D CGI type environment this time. And then we're going to do our proceed. We're going to do our iterative upscale as well, just to boost it. But um, I mean that looks awesome. Like I said, so it is doing exactly what we want. I mean, if I said, how about if I say, uh, festive Christmas scene. we go now it looks all snowy and it's got this nice sunset on it i think it's almost trying to make candy canes out of the <laughs> yeah it's trying to make like a red and white thing there be interesting to see what the upscaler does with it okay very photo realistic okay that's cool so like i said it's just a quick video really just to tell you that the uh, COSXL converter does work with edit. You can make your own with Juggernaut or whatever uh, popular checkpoint for SDXL you want. And then you can load your LoRa's in as well. If I just, uh, is this on a fixed seed right now? No, it's on randomized. So let's just put it on a fixed seed. Let's go back to watercolor. Okay, watercolor painting. And I will disable my LoRa for now. We want to see that it actually is working with edit. 
Um, and I think we explained in the previous video, if you actually look at this node in the workflow, it's actually a group node, right? So um, I, I, in the previous video, I exploded this by convert to nodes. So if you have any problems with it, you can always blow it up and see which part isn't working. Somebody mentioned they had to do that on their system. Okay, so it's done the watercolor for me, right? So now I will enable my Laura and just turn it back on again. And there you go. As you can see, you get a little bit more detail because it does contain knowledge of this type of image. Obviously, it was used to generate the original. This that that Laura was used to generate the original image. So when you load it in with edit, it will have a positive influence on it because it's going to sort of keep it on rails. All right. So that's everything I have to tell you about this one. We've got some more coming up soon. So, yeah, thanks again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.